You're listening to Lore Friendly. I'm your host, Chris Takashi, and with me, as always, is Alice Bell. Say hello, Alice. Hi, guys. How are you on this fine Monday morning? <laughs> I'm not bad, thank you, Chris. How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, I'm not too high, not too low. Even keel, I think, is the word. Even keel, that's, that's a bit of a weird phrase. I've never really heard that before. Really? I'd say it's kind of common, don't you Even think? keel, even what does keel? that even mean? It's just like they've... S- squunch two words together and hope that it makes sense <laughs> you make it sound like i'm speaking klingon or something it's totally an english phrase even keel it's a balance phrase even keel off kilter you know stuff like that like off kilter makes sense because kilter's like balance and off is like you're not balanced whereas even what was it you said even keel even keel like what does keel even mean i want to say it's part of a ship um yes a structural keel is a beam around the hull of a ship as built the keel runs in the middle of a ship from the bow to the stern is that where they put the mast it's not a mast i i want to say it's on the bottom of the ship so like you want to be even keel so you don't tip over maybe okay that makes sense i know there's that phrase keel hauling which is like a punishment where they drag a person yeah from the uh, ship, okay i'm not exactly sure what exactly the keel is or where it is well keel is just a weird word anyway like it makes me feel think about this university that we've got in wales it isn't even wales it's like cheshire Okay, it took me a little while to register that you were talking about whales a place and not giant mammals that live in the sea. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so I was like, it's inside a whale? Yeah, yeah, like Pinocchio. I mean, they had a ship in Pinocchio, I think. It's been a while since I saw the movie. (laughs) Yeah, and it's kind of unfair to whales if you think about it, the way they depict them. Like, the whale in the movie is completely menacing and scary. Whereas whales in real life are just kind of chill. And docile, aren't they? Just swim around the ocean. They just, like, go around scooping up krill. Yeah. I mean, they're not swallowing ships or anything like that. I suppose, like, they just, like, go around swimming with their mouths open, hoping to catch food. So if a ship went in there... <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't sound like the whale's fault. Yeah. Yeah, like, you can't really blame them. They're not very discerning about what they eat, because they literally just swim around with their gobs open. Like, that's how I'd like to eat food <laughs> they just walk into food and just eat it like Pac-Man <laughs> do you think Pac-Man was inspired by whales um do I believe Pac-Man the video game was inspired by a giant ship eating whale <laughs> I'm gonna say no I mean he's not even blue well no because the ghosts are blue well one of the ghosts is blue <laughs> but the mere fact that there's ghosts kind of disproves your theory there I mean I would say it's inspired more by exorcists. Because, I mean, exorcists are there to remove ghosts. I mean, that's their thing. Whales, not so much. Yeah, but he's a pretty shit exorcist most of the time, unless he eats some fruit. (laughs) I don't know of many fruit-powered exorcists. (laughs) Well, maybe that's how he earns his living. He exercises the ghosts, and in exchange, he gets some fruit. And otherwise, he would starve to death. Well, yeah, but you're not meant to eat just fruit. That's not a balanced diet. You'd, like, overload on sugar. Like, there is a lot of sugars in fruit. (laughs) Well, that's just in the video game. I mean, in real life, the exorcist would exchange for something more practical. So it's like, I get rid of the scary phantom from hell. (laughs) You cook me a nice steak dinner. (laughs) And maybe, like, a bed to sleep in or something like that. I mean, (laughs) food is just a metaphor here. It's a metaphor for the exchange of has He has, like, a deal with the ghost, like the voodoo man in um, Princess and the Frog. Where he's just like, okay, so I'm going to go around these houses. You've got to follow me. I'll point out the houses with the best food. You go haunt them for a bit and then I'll pop in, save you, get fed. We'll go off to the next house and I won't ever properly exercise you. That's the deal. (laughs) Yeah, you never want to be too good at your job if you're an exorcist. Then you'll be out of work. Yeah. Like you just exercise them enough. (laughs) Yeah, you get rid of... You know, the really scary phantoms and goblins and stuff like that. You leave a, you leave a few, um, like, scary grandmas and stuff like that. Just floating in the <laughs> attic or something. Yeah, your house is definitely situated on a hell mouth because these ghosts just keep on coming back. It's not my fault. I'm doing my job. Feed me, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we've been watching a lot of pirate shows lately. Yar, har, fiddle dee dee. Da, 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 da. You do what you want because a pirate is free. You are a pirate. <laughs> yeah, but Black Sails isn't that kind of pirate show. No, there is not one stereotypical pirate accent in this series. As far as I have seen, there is a wide array of English accents and that makes me bizarrely happy because I'm sick of the stereotypical English accent all the time and this doesn't have it and it's great and it makes me happy. I'm sure some of them aren't even British. Like, you get American actors with, you know, the fake faux English accent and stuff like that. Well, yeah, but they're not stereotypical. Apart from maybe that, like... I can't remember his name. The smarmy guy who talks like this. And is the one that... Spoilers. He's the one that's trying to... That um is meant to be having the... um The fragment of the book sold to him. I honestly have no clue who you're talking about. Have you been watching <laughs> the same show? Fragment of the book? I mean, it sounds like we're talking about horcruxes or something like that. Um... Do you mean Long John Silver? No, it's not John Silver. It's the guy who they're trying to sell that to. Oh, okay. So it's Captain Vane then. Because, I mean, that's who I was talking about earlier with the English accent. Because, I mean, Captain Vane is like, the guy actor who plays him is totally American. So, like, so in the show he's like this total badass. But if you watch, like, the YouTube uh, clips of the actor, he's he's just a total goofball. And he doesn't have, he has an American accent. So it's totally um, jarring. It isn't Captain Vane. It's his shipmate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so much for that. Um, shipmate. That isn't the sexy woman. Oh, oh Jack Rackham. Yeah. Jack Rackham. Yeah, him. He's got a really annoying accent. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went on that whole whole spiel about Captain Bane. You're like, nope, nope, that's not the guy I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Completely irrelevant. But yeah, it's always strange to see someone um, who you're used to speaking a specific accent speak in a different voice and it's like oh this is what they must mean by acting i get that with andrew lincoln because like i've been watching the walking dead the finale shit by the way (laughs) um and um it's really jarring because he's like an english actor he was in love actually and stuff like that and yet he does this really heavy southern accent so when you hear him actually speak it's so bizarre because he's not saying coral that was my southern accent, by the way. Yeah, you get a lot of that where American actors, or English actors, I'm sorry, do American voices. Like, um, for instance, have you seen The Wire? No, but I want to see it because it it was written by the same guy who did Breaking Bad. <laughs> what? Wasn't Vince it? Vince Gilligan has nothing to do with The Wire. The Wire was made by David Simon. Oh. Why is it? Why am I thinking that it's got <laughs> The only a... connection Vince Gilligan has to The Wire is... He made a show that also vaguely had to do with drugs. I'm sure that someone to do with Breaking Bad had to... <laughs> <laughs> yes, because Vince Gilligan is in charge of all drug shows. Breaking Bad, The Wire. <laughs> they don't even allow anyone else to make them anymore. They just said, nope, if Vince isn't involved, it won't get made. I'm sure that someone to do with Breaking Bad had something to do with The Wire. I read that somewhere. I'm gonna fucking Google it. <laughs> but yeah, um, what I was gonna say is that with The Wire, you have a lot of actors who have English backgrounds. Like if you didn't know them, or didn't know that their work in uh, other shows, you wouldn't realize that they're not American. Like yeah, for instance, Littlefinger is in The Wire, and so is uh, Idris Elba. Oh, cool. Like, I know that Game of Thrones and shows like that, they do try to make use of, like, English actors and as much as they can. But then you've got characters like Peter Dinklage, well, actors like Peter Dinklage, and it's just very jarring because his, let's face it, his accent is not amazing. <laughs> it isn't? Uh, I can't tell. It all sounds the same to me. It just sounds very strange. But, yeah, I appreciate the diversity of British accents displayed in the show. I also really like, I wrote her name down, Guthrie. 
Guthrie. Eleanor Guthrie. Yeah, she's fucking cool. Like, that is how you introduce a character. Like, that is a wonderful way to introduce a character. Like, oh, I was so happy. Because, like, she looks fairly sweet and innocent. And she doesn't look very intimidating. But then she just comes out with a zinger. And it's like, right, that is a character-defining moment. That is how you should introduce a character. Because it says so much about her. Like, it says that, oh, she's been struggling with, like the the role as like almost the leader of this little colony because she's a woman and she's not given the respect that she deserves and yet she's found a way to somehow capitalize on that and beat that yeah i really liked eleanor to start <clears throat> in general i like all the female characters and um, they're all very strong in their own way um and yet at the same time they're all very vulnerable yeah and so i think they're Really three dimensional and really well done. <clears throat> yeah. Like you have Anne Bonny, the badass. You have Max, who's trying to, who's sort of born into like slavery, like born into a brothel, and she's trying to find her own way. Yeah. And whereas Eleanor Guthrie is someone who's born into privilege, and yet she's trying to earn respect in a man's world. And it's just, yeah. All of that fits together nicely. And that's what's really impressive about the show. You have all these like diverse backgrounds and yeah. people and, they somehow fit together into a single narrative and that's really great and i think it's because they sort of focus on a central theme of just trying to find your own way trying to find your own freedom yeah and because they all have different definitions of what freedom is it sort of um it sort of creates these conflicts between them yeah and i almost want to say it's oddly romantic about how they all chase their own particular form of freedom I think, like, there's something romantic about that notion, but it, the whole, like, Yaha of Pirate's Life for me isn't presented in a romantic light. Right, romantic might be the wrong word. Like, it isn't idealised in any way. It really gets into the nitty-gritty of it. Like, yeah. the very first episode, you have, like, a really gruesome sword fight. You have people being blown up left, right, and centre as one of the opening scenes. And, like, it doesn't romanticise their death because it's... The f- the opening scene is told from the pr- the perspective of the losers, basically. But, like, it's... Yeah, I think it's a good mix of romantic ideals and harsh reality, I guess, would be a better way of putting it. Yeah, it's really... Like, what, going back to the point about the female characters, like, that's what... The diversity of the female characters and the way that they play to their different strengths is, like, the kind of diversity that I wish that Game of Thrones had. Because... At this point, not at the start of Game of Thrones, but at this point, it seems we've got sexy people who use sex to get sex and get what they want. And we have stone cold bitches who are stone cold bitches and kill everyone. Like, that is the main archetypes, whereas even in just the few episodes of Black Sails that I've watched, I can already see much greater diversity, which is wonderful. And I do think it gets even better going forward i think season one they were trying to find their voice a little bit and yeah so they were emulating a lot of the uh archetypes and sort of just the softcore porn and violence elements that game of thrones had yeah and then as you go into season two and season three you start getting into a much more political show and characters with much more depth and that title sequence absolutely gorgeous can I just yeah, say? Yeah, Black Sails has tremendous production value. Tremendous. It's, it's absolutely... Like, the whole show, from what I've seen so far, is gorgeous. Like, the use of practical effects to the combination of, like, using the green screen for the sea shots and stuff like that. It's absolutely gorgeous. And, like, the costuming's beautiful. I have a thing for costuming. And it's just... Like, the whole aesthetic of the show is absolutely beautiful <laughs> yeah there's nothing about the show that you can really criticize it's great production value great acting great characters great story and you can really tell that they wanted to distinguish themselves from the whole pirate of the caribbean uh, yo ho ho in a bottle of rum pirate stereotype yar <laughs> <laughs> so are we gonna are we gonna game of thrones rate it even though it's not a game. Sure, why not? We haven't played a game this time, sorry guys. Well, 
climate. Yeah, on so them. on a scale of Game of Thrones characters, what do you give Black Sails? I would rate it. Um, fuck, I don't know. A Greyjoy. Which Greyjoy? Any of the Greyjoys apart from Theon. Asha, Yara. I don't know. I think Theon's kind of a good choice, at least for like Eleanor Guthrie, because she's got like one hand in the old Stark business and the other hand um, with his family in the Iron Islands. Mm. <laughs> On the flip side, there's a lot of sex in Black Sails, and Theon isn't going to be having that anytime <laughs> soon. So, I'd say Yara. Yara then. No, Asher. It's Asher in the books. Fuck. The new trailer dropped, and it's fucking me up. I'd say Asher. Because, like, she's she's a cool pirate lady. And this show has cool pirate ladies. Mm, I'm going to go with... Fuck, I can't remember her name. Who's who's the one that uh, Maisie Williams plays? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Arya Stark. Jesus Christ, how could I forget that? Probably everyone's favorite character. But, yeah, I'm going with Arya because she is strong independent and she's kind of lost she doesn't really know her place in the world and so she's kind of a lot like uh, the pirates and and the lannisters are basically england anyway i can get behind that yeah Arya's also very (laughs) violent so that goes hand in hand with black sails too well she's not the most violent character in game of thrones because that would be george rr martin (laughs) aka Gurm, gurm, gurm. It's like gurn, isn't it? Have you ever? Do you know what gurning is? Not a clue. It's like if you take certain drugs, you start grinding your teeth together for no reason. So that's gurning. Mm. I don't imagine gurm gurning because he seems like I, I see him more as a jovial type of killer. Like, he reminds me of Santa Claus. Like, he should just be, like, patting his stomach <laughs> as he as he considers who his next victim is. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, so you don't want to get on that naughty list. He's going to totally kill you. I imagine him as being a bit like Gandalf. Like, he just smokes weed every day. He does have a body type that would go well with a pipe. Like, does he smoke pipes? He should if he doesn't. He probably does. Like, even if he doesn't smoke, like, just to have it to chew on or something yeah i just find it disturbing like how innocent and jovial he looks in comparison to the material that he puts out well most serial killers are i mean if you think about like ted bundy or some of the classic real life examples i mean they're usually more approachable and yeah like the most famous serial killers are handsome or charismatic or... (laughs) or in this case adopting the guise of santa claus yeah He's not just any serial killer either. He's like one of the most prolific serial killers of our time. Has a very high death count, that one. <laughs> and he doesn't even have to hide the bodies. That's that's what that's what um Song of Ice and Fire is really. <laughs> it's just like a graphic retelling of all of his murders. Like he wrote this series to brag about all the murders that he's committed. And no one realizes because it's fantasy. Ha 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 ha. It's the perfect crime, really. Yeah. You wonder how he got away with it for so long. It's like, ha I chopped this dude's head off, but no one will know because they all think it's Ned Stark. Ha <laughs> ha ah, 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 ah. I believe it. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Game of Thrones is real anyway. Did you hear that Egret and Jon Snow are together in real life? Are they hook? Are they hooking up again? <clears throat> it's not just hooking up. They're like in a relationship. Oh, Rose Leslie is such a cutie. Yeah, she's pretty hot. It's so weird though, because you know she has that really like broad accent on the show. Mm-hmm. Like she is, she is the most well-spoken person imaginable. Like she goes from this right to oh hello. I'm Egret, and I play... I'm not Egret, I'm Rose Leslie. <laughs> like, like there's a very... Yeah, like, she goes from fucking e-bag um, going up wall, aren't we? To <laughs> yeah, but they all sound the same to people who aren't from England. Well, yeah. Like, but... it's not like with Christian Bale. <laughs> like, with Christian Bale, it's jarring because he goes from 
Hello, governor. To Hello, governor. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> 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 that just came through one of my headphones. That was t- oh Jesus Christ! You shit me up. I don't do impressions, yeah, <laughs> or at least I don't do. Them that well. was bad. That wasn't nice, Chris. Why you do this? Yeah, I couldn't remember like any of the actual lines though. I could never remember the lines. Where are the drugs? <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was it. Where are the drugs? Or I guess if it was like a British Batman, it'd be like, "Where's my tea?" <laughs> but yeah. Um, British Batman probably wouldn't work. British American Psycho would probably be a better idea. They should make that movie. They should. They did. They apparently did a sequel, American Psycho 2. It wasn't very good. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it would be mm. good. What would the English Psycho do, do you think? Mm. Take people's heads off with a polo bat. <laughs> uh, tally her, old chum! <laughs> They, yeah, they could make a whole series off of yeah. that if you think about it. American Psycho, Russian Psycho, French Psycho. And what would French Psycho be? French Psycho would have to have something to do with baguettes and Eiffel Towers. Because... <laughs> It'd probably just be a mime or yeah. something. No, the French Psycho would surrender to the police at the first instant because, hey. But um. Ah, French jokes. <laughs> Yeah, there would be a psycho for every country yeah. and culture. Yeah. Uh, what would Canadian psycho be? Oh, I'm sorry that I've got to do this to you. <laughs> yeah, he's all super I'm polite sorry. and stuff. <laughs> hey there, friend. I'm sorry about them nipple clamps I put on you, eh? Hey, it's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. Sorry about that there uh, hockey puck that I stuck up your ass, eh? <laughs> Hopefully that thing doesn't get infected. <laughs> I want you to die before I got a chance to kill you. <laughs> so, should we talk about survival mode now? I have had a glance at the features, and I can't speak for how difficult Fallout 4 is on the default, but a lot of it looks like a lot of the features, such as like the dehydration and the needing to eat and stuff like that and the increased difficulty in general it reminds me of the survival mode in fallout 4 for fallout new vegas sorry which was quite fun to play if terribly difficult because i'm not very good at fallout yeah i think the new vegas system was a lot more basic yeah was a good like starting run. yeah and this one it's really in depth like every single consumable item has a side effect to it basically you can't use yeah. stim pack without getting dehydrated and you can't drink dirty water without getting irradiated and if you um do too much of one thing you become more susceptible to getting sick so there's a lot of thought put into just what you put in your body and that's pretty cool yeah they also put a lot of thought into the speed of health effect so if you're about to die you can't just pull up your pit boy and eat a hundred melons or something to heal yourself you have yeah. to actually run away because you're not gonna heal fast that's enough. my favorite thing in skyrim just be like right just hold up a sec i'm gonna eat this cheese wheel and we'll be good okay we can carry on just give us a minute so yeah i really like survival mode um the only drawbacks are for me are that it sometimes feels a little more tedious than it needs to be particularly when there's an item that you need to consume like food or water that is so plentiful or made plentiful by another mechanic in the game like settlements uh, provide so much food and water that there really isn't a need to or there really isn't ever a point in the game where you feel like you might run out like at the beginning of the game you're like where am I going to get my water? Where am I going to get my food? And it's really intense. And once you get that first settlement, it's like, oh, okay, this is where I'm going to get my food and water. So it's sort of takes away the um, the element of survival just by having settlements. And it just goes to show that when one part of the game is implemented after another, it doesn't necessarily jive because that wasn't the plan from the beginning. The other thing that people are really kind of conflicted about or arguing about is the save mode which requires you to sleep in a bed you can't quick save you can't save whenever you want like you can normally in bethesda games okay i can 
get behind that. It reminds me of um, things like Silent Hill and Resident Evil and a lot of the other older games where you have to go find like a typewriter or a rune or something like that to save. Like, I quite like that. Yeah, it's very old school. Like all the old JRPGs were like that where you had to go to an inn to sleep. Yeah. And that would be your Yeah, save. it's quite old school. But again, yeah, like with the food and water stuff, the argument against it is that the game wasn't designed to have saves that way like there's yeah. not established checkpoints like yeah with resident evil or um games like that where they know this is where you need to save yeah but there's enough beds i do think that's a little bit overstated because there's so many beds in the game that um it's not really a problem i don't think yeah like it looks like a lot of the features in survival mode have kind of been like, they've definitely been inspired by some of the more successful Skyrim mods, which is understandable. Like, games from the same developer, RPGs, stuff like that, both have both eventually will be able to be modded, pretty much. But, like, the dehydration thing sounds a lot like... The dehydration mechanics and everything sounds a lot like realistic needs and diseases. Yeah. Um, it, it looks like... St- like, no more fast travel, that's, like, one of the most popular nods, mods on the Nexus. Just something that simply disables fast travel. Um, mm-hmm. Lethality is, like, any of the creature overhauls. Um, I quite like this the sound of this one. Um, I'm looking at the Bethesda website. Um, threats, unless added by a recon scope, no longer display on the compass. I quite like that idea. Right, but that's also kind of like the mods that remove the compass altogether. Like, I want as little clutter on my screen as possible, so I usually play without the compass. Really? I I get lost easily, so I need the compass, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> like, how can you get lost in Skyrim? It's not even that big of a place. Well, I'm an idiot, so I, I got lost in Nottingham today, <laughs> so Did there's you? that. I've lived here for three years. Maybe you need a compass in real life, too. Like, isn't there an app for that? My phone's in for repairs, because I smashed the screen. Uh, Not whilst I was drunk. Whilst I was checking the gas meter trying to be an adult. That's an important distinction. I dropped the phone on the ground, because I was texting my friend the gas meter. And I dropped it on the ground, and now the screen isn't working, so I've had to send it in for repairs. (laughs) You're like one of those people who just needs to put everything in bubble wrap. I feel like that would be helpful in everyday life. Probably. Definitely on nights out, that would be useful. The amount of cuts and bruises I ended up with on my birthday. I have no idea how I got them. I feel like I fall down a lot. <laughs> well, maybe you need something that records uh, your nights out so you know what happened the next morning. Well, that's that's what Snapchat's for. Is it? I've heard of Snapchat, but I don't really know what it is. Yeah. Like, you can like do a Snapchat story of your nights out and record stuff. But I never do it because I'm just too busy having a whale of a time. Is it something like you mount to your head or something like that? Or I could, I could, get, I could fork out for a GoPro to record for my nights out. That'd be hilarious. Okay, so it's a GoPro. Yeah, and be like, oh shit, I did that. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> and you're like, oh, there's a reason I don't want to remember this. Yeah, I feel like if I've forgotten something, it's generally for a good reason. Yeah, it's like, oh, so that's why my brain decided not to keep these memories. Maybe I shouldn't have recorded them for all the world to see. Yeah, it's like you you don't want to remember that. You don't want to you don't want to know what you did. It's an internal safety measure more or less. <laughs> yeah. It's just going through the system and it's just like, right, delete that, delete that, delete that. Yeah, you don't need to see this. All better now. Yeah. Oh dear. Alright, that does it for this episode of Lore Friendly. Sorry for the poor quality, guys. Bye! (laughs) Yeah, we'll try to do better next time. Bye.
Yeah. DNA and killing children and rape. That's what Game of Thrones is all about. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, it's the show we always talk about. Like, what does that say about us? 